Hello, welcome to Rome Business Radio. My name is Roger Manus. We are coming to you from our studios here at the Rome News Tribune in downtown Rome, Georgia. And let me explain a little bit to you what Rome Business Radio is all about. We are here as part of the Business Radio X family to celebrate the business community that is Rome and Northwest Georgia. And today we are joined by a couple of people heavily involved in the business community in Rome and Northwest Georgia. We've got Amanda Farrell, a small business owner of, of Farrell's Frame and Design located in downtown Rome. And we are also joined by Doug Walker, who is a big name in this town. He has been working at the Rome News Tribune and in local radio for 30 35 years, 35 yeah. years. Um, and we were, we were joking before we started here about what his job title here is at the Rome news. And basically we've come up with Renaissance man in charge of economics and ecology. Those work for me, <laughs> <laughs> but you're a business guy. First yeah. And foremost. yeah I, I was hired to, to basically be the business editor. The, the former business editor, uh, had, had moved on and, and they were looking for somebody who knew the community and at that particular time, I had been in the community for 25 years. In, and, lo- in local radio, as yeah, we can in tell local by your radio, lo- right. we can tell by your voice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is news director over at the uh, WRGA Q102 South 107 group uh, from 1984 to 2009, and just made the, made the change at, at the right time, I guess. All right, and Amanda, how long have you been in business over at Farrell's Frame and Design? Well, five years ago this month, we were doing renovations to open at our first location. We just moved. So, um, well, at ha- our, our, happy, happy anniversary, first of all, <laughs> birthday, you. whatever it is, <laughs> right, for your for the business. Yep. But you just moved, so you're downtown abroad now. We, we were on the cotton block, and now we're on the 500 block. Exactly. Okay. So what, what facilitated the move? Unfortunately, we had some uh, issues come up with the building. Okay. Um, so have you settled in now and everything good and, and everything's good to go? We are still very much unpacking. <laughs> it's been about 40, 45 days. Um, and we didn't have much notice. So we kind of took our work with us and started working while unpacking. And so it'll, I think it took me three years the first time to get it the way I liked it. So it's going to be a while. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you're, you're, when, every time you move, uh, I, I would shudder to look at Doug's desk if he's been here as long as he... About, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to look at my desk. <laughs> all, all the stuff that we collect over time, and especially in your business with f- all the frames and everything that you must, the inventory of that. If you could just expand a little bit about what it is you do specifically in the services you offer. Well, um, we are primarily a frame shop. We do all kinds of framing from residential to corporate framing. Um, we do everything from diplomas to shadow boxes to textiles. We also offer fine art printing and um, gicle reproductions for artists. We have a artist gallery in the shop that we um, like to support local artists. And that's not just from Rome. We kind of branch out a little bit. We even so much so as to Atlanta. And we hang those um, people's art in the shop and they are for sale. And I have been accused of not being able to say no. So we do a lot of different random projects that have nothing to do with framing, but have to do with handiwork. So if you can't find somebody to help you with your project, you know, I might be able to be the person. (laughs) Well, I went on your website briefly and I'm glad you pronounced G clay because I was going to say, how do you pronounce that? Uh, Doug, (laughs) Doug, do you know what that is? Because I'm about to ask. No (laughs) idea. Fire away. What, what, what does that mean exactly? Well, so G clay is um, a French term and it loosely means inkjet. Um, it's a type of art reproduction that artists can sell. So if they have an original piece of artwork and they want us to make copies of it so they can sell their prints, the Gicle printer, it prints on high quality museum paper. Most of them are a rag paper and it, co- it prints with color fast ink. So it's really, really, really pretty color and it's not going to fade and it's going to have longevity. Okay. Uh, well, that actually explained a word I did not understand. So thank you. Doug, she's on Broad Street. From your perspective, 25 years in radio and 10 plus years now here at the Rome News Tribune, just talk about the business development corridor, the changes. I'm, I'm hitting you with a big broad question here, Doug. The changes in Broad Street, downtown Rome, Georgia over the years that you have seen. It's crazy. Well, when I came here, the, the renaissance of Broad Street was just getting started, uh, probably a couple of years in. One of the things that really sold me on coming to Rome was when I came up to do my interview. Uh, when we were done, I walked downtown with an attorney friend of mine, Floyd Farless, who uh, I had been in college with uh, years and years ago. Um, and, and the ambiance of downtown Rome, I stopped at the time at what was Marlin's Ye Old World Sandwich Shop, <laughs> which at the time was in the 400 block uh, in the building, I believe, which is now part of the... Uh, 
uh, part of the Murphy's building where V3 and La Scala is. I, I believe it was in, in that okay. particular little hole down there in Broad Street. They, they had a sidewalk uh, sandwich sale going on that day before there were you know sidewalk cafes on Broad Street. And just the whole ambiance of downtown, just I loved it. I, I love small town. I, while I really grew up technically in the suburbs of D.C., I spent my life, uh, every every weekend of my life, at my grandparents' house. It's about 60 miles outside of Washington. And to this day, guys, to this day, the same distance we are from Atlanta, the county that my grandparents lived in, to this day, does not have a traffic signal. Oh, my goodness. In the entire county. Wow. Rappahannock County, Virginia. You are small town. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, I'm comfortable in small town. And, right. And, uh, like John Cougar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Broad Street certainly has changed. It, yeah. It's, um, you know, Ann Arnold, uh, Jan Hackett before Ann, and then Ann Arnold when t- she took over the Downtown Development Authority. It really, really took advantage of all of the state loan programs, the Department of Community Affairs, the Georgia Cities uh, Foundation municipal loan programs, and uh, just millions and millions of dollars has been poured into Rome over the last 25 years to renovate some of these old historic buildings. Um, you, you might add preservationist to my list of things. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and I, you part know, of, I, part I of I your love, renaissance. Man. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I love being able to save a lot of these old buildings downtown. You know, I, I hated, hated it when the top hat building had to come down, mm-hmm. but that had just gotten in such bad shape that it just, it just had to happen. Um, we lost the, uh, the house up on the hill here, uh, you know, up on Hoyt Hill a couple of years ago. What's going up um, will be, you know, good housing. and will add to the tax value of our downtown district greatly. And, of course, what Ira Levy did down at the corner of 3rd and Broad to replace the top hat is, is spectacular. It really looks good. It, I think one of the great things about it, it doesn't look out of place, in my opinion. Uh, it was designed and, and built well to fit into downtown Rome. That, all that said, we still have probably more vacancies downtown than Amanda Carter and the, and the Downtown Development Authority folks would, would really like to admit, admit to. Uh, there's the, the old Frick's Furniture Building is still fairly empty, um, and there there are you know a number of buildings that, that are empty. I think we're down to just maybe one building downtown now that has boarded up windows on the second floor. I think it's just one. Well, uh, that's that, and that looks fabulous. Well, what's interesting is not only is not only is downtown historic, and and that has been maintained, but it's it's now a mix of residential and business and things like that. It's just as and 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 government, uh, of course, which has always been based down there. As a small business person, uh, tell us a little bit, Amanda, about what it's like to be downtown and the kind of traffic you get uh, into your business there on Broad. Well, it's it's very diverse it's very interesting um we get um you know we have we're kind of a destination location so we get a lot of people who come to us for the purpose of framing um but then the walk-in traffic especially at our new location because we have these really pretty windows i was able to decorate um we get a lot of interesting people coming in and i you know i like to talk so i get them talking about the backgrounds and what they do in rome and it's really cool to see how a lot of the business owners are just out and about during the day and they go in and introduce themselves to new people. And I've been able to meet a lot of people who actually aren't from Rome at all. They just commute to Rome and they work in Rome and on their lunch break, they go downtown to see what we have to offer. So it's really awesome to see that because they're trying to invest in, in Rome. Well, and there's, there's kind of, uh, there's a daytime broad street and a nighttime broad Definitely. street, which, which again, p- people in Rome know what I'm talking about, but anybody listening to this podcast outside of it, this is a great downtown and it's got a thriving little nightlife and great businesses during the day. What is your background? How did you get into, I, I read on your bio that apparently you like, like framing and you like dogs. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I like dogs too. <laughs> I think you had five. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> uh, so you could talk about your dogs if you'd like, but I also want to know about how did you, how did you get into framing? What is your background? Well, um, I actually come kind of accidentally stumbled upon it when I graduated high school. I needed to get a job and I found um, an ad on Craigslist that said they were looking for a framer. <laughs> um, and so that I went in and I met Cindy and Scott and Jim and they were a powerhouse of a team and they are, they were in downtown Roswell. Um, and so I trained under Jim who is a master framer, which is a really elite um, title in our industry. Yeah. And he taught me, 
he was very strict with how he taught, but I benefited greatly from it because I learned a lot that some people in our industry don't learn. Um, and I thought I was just going to work part-time and go to college and I went to college, but I didn't end up liking what I went to college for. (laughs) (laughs) So I ended up, um, yeah, I, I told one of my very best friends, um, about 10 years, well, I guess 15 years ago at this point, that one day I was going to own my own frame shop and, you know, it happened. <laughs> so you had, a, you had a little bit of a nugget in the back of your brain saying, I want to own my own business. Uh, and how has that in the Rome business community, welcoming, e- easy to get going, tough to get going, small business challenges, just to, just give us that experience. Well, in my experience, from the second we got here, it was just an on pouring of support. It was amazing. The chamber, um, we worked with Craig McDaniel to find a spot and he was wonderful. And he spent a lot of time with us, helping us find the really great spot. You actually, I don't know if you remember this. (laughs) Um, she's pointing at Doug. This is is audio. She's not pointing at me. She's pointing at Doug. Go ahead. He called me randomly and asked a couple of questions about the business. And at this point I had, you know, we had painted the walls and we had gotten some stuff ready. And I told him, yeah, I think we're going to try to open in, you know, maybe a couple of weeks. Well, you wrote the article and you said, we're opening February 22nd. <laughs> and so we well, did. Yeah. And we had so many. Did people. I do that? <laughs> I have it, hang- it frame taken okay, on my all right. wall. Um, Way to go, Doug. But from the very first day we opened, we had people there to support us. And the businesses in Rome have also been very supportive of me as a business. Um, you know, I have a personal relationship with them as well, but they really try to reach local when they're doing things. And it's just been wonderful. I can't say enough about Rome. And I told you earlier what we weren't on the air, but you know, I've been a lot of places cause I'm a military brat. I'm a military spouse. And I can say 100% that Rome is the best place I've ever been. Like the people here at the just the vibe of this town. It's amazing. I don't ever want to leave. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. Thank your family for their service. I will. Um, that's awesome. Um, so Doug, in, in addition to scheduling when she opened, uh, <laughs> right. That probably would have been a small business snapshot. <laughs> it, I think it was, ta- I think it was ta- in the Roman record, in the Roman record. Yeah. That's what right. it was. Yeah. Um, what word is word on the street? Maybe yeah, word on the street. Yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. Word on the street. Um, what what is what advice would you give to somebody listening, Doug, based on your experience about opening and starting a small business in Rome? I mean, you've seen you've seen lots over the years. <laughs> well, I, you could you could start me up big time there to borrow a phrase from the Rolling Stones. Um, uh, well, one of the things that that I see the the, the big changes that's happened in in journalism and in, in the industry and in business is so many people are wanting to do things strictly using social media. Now, now I'm, I'm into social media. I'm a Facebooker. Uh, I don't twit or tweet or <laughs> whatever that is. Whatever the president does, yeah, I, don't do, I don't do that. Uh, I try to stay out of that. Uh, yeah, I accuse my um, nieces and nephews of Insta-face tweet chatting. You, I don't you, even you, know, watch, I, you watch I, NCIS? Is, I have seen it. Yeah. yeah. Mark Harmon <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, crosses yeah. those names of those all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At any rate, um, <laughs> we, we had a, a, a young girl started a, a coffee shop down in the 200 block a couple of years ago. And she just strictly advertised via Facebook and Twitter. And she lasted about three months. And, um, you know, I asked her, she had great scones, just tremendous scones. Coffee was good. I said, I said you had 400 and something Facebook friends. How many of them even lived in Rome? How many of them could have potentially been customers? Right. So, you know, I would say one of the keys is is when you're doing your business plan, uh, number one, maybe call the folks up at the Georgia Small Business Development Center to help out Richard Montanero and his crew up there. Um, secondly, you know, you've got to have capital to let people know you're here, not just in the newspaper, but radio, maybe magazines. You got you got to you've got to get the word out. You got to let people know where you're at, um, and I think that's so critical. And then if you, uh, once you get past that, if you've got a good service, uh, if you've got a good product, people will come back. You know, repeat business is tremendous. I my my other uh, alter ego, <laughs> right, is DJ Denali. Okay, <laughs> being being in the radio business forever, I you know I have a tremendous music collection and. I love music, and I've DJed. I do, do weddings and a lot of class reunions here lately. Um, 
but at this point, you know, after 30 something years, I'm pretty much strictly word of mouth. But to start, I had to print business cards and get that word out as, as far as you can. And that, and that's probably one of the biggest failings that I see is people are undercapitalized and, and in terms of their own marketing and making sure they let the world know where they're at, like Amanda. Yeah, um, it's going to be important for her. I, I know she's got a great customer base, A, but it's going to be important to potential customers to let them know she's moved. I think that's probably another word on the street this week. Maybe that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you 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 got to get the word. I mean, there's no substitute for good advertising. And you know, being a business writer, I, I couldn't tell you how many times. I will uh, I will get a call from somebody who will say, hey, I, I want to advertise my business. And I'm saying, are you wanting to advertise your business or are you wanting me to do a news story about your business? Right. There's a very distinct difference. Sure. A very, very distinct difference. Um, a lot of what I do, quite frankly, to be very honest, is free publicity. Um, but if if somebody can justify it, a new business coming to town, a business moving, coming to town, then I'm, I'm all for it. But you've also got to do that regular advertising. Yeah. Well, um, the key to marketing is consistency as well. Yes, sir. And, uh, yes, sir. so what, what challenges in marketing, uh, have you run into Amanda? Uh, is it, I mean, is it, yeah, word of mouth and you got a great customer base and your location is awesome, but what challenges do you run into as a small business trying to allocate? Well, my very, very, very first problem when I went into business is I was like, I could do this myself. So I tried to design all of my business cards and my ads and everything. It was not a good plan. <laughs> I ended up hiring someone, a professional, to do all of the ad designs and come up with a new logo. And And when I did that, things changed. Like it looked, it went from, you know, I was there, I was 24 when I opened. So it was all swirly and pretty and beautiful and no one could read it. <laughs> so when I got someone professional in and they started helping me, I told them my vision and they were able to do it the way it should actually have been done and not the swirlies. But that was a huge help. And you're right. Cause I, I, with consistency, I was putting random things, random places and no one put them together. And now that I've had someone help me come up with a brand package and brand colors. And we're able to unifyly just put our name out there and someone sees our color and they're like, Hey, that's barrels. Mm -hmm. And so that has been great. But the, the avenues in Rome that you have to advertise are incredible. You've got Northwest Georgia living V3 good news, the Rome tribune, the chamber. It's, it just goes on and on and on. And we, we hit them all. And on top of that, I also do a lot of what I like to call guerrilla marketing is I get, I get my face out there. I try to go to, pl I go to places, I go talk to people. I try to go to chamber events. I try to go to, you know, there were a couple art openings this weekend. I try to go there and make sure that, you know, not only do I let my customers know, like, yeah, I, I, I need to frame because that's how I eat, but I also support the people who support me. And that's super important. So there are a lot of ways to advertise. Sounds like she has a good plan. Yeah, there, face mm -hmm. face to face relationships. There's there's no substitute for that either. Yeah. And and getting to know people, getting out in the community, is a big thing. You can't just sit in your office and wait for people to come to you. No. And do you have a do you have staff? Is it is it you? Is it? <laughs> so my manager, she unfortunately just left. Okay. Um, it, during our move, it was a lot. Um, so right now it's just me, but I am going to be restaffing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Okay. And, and so I want to get back into, uh, just a couple of more of the specifics of your business, you know, cause we, we just kind of gloss over, uh, you know, custom framing and shadow boxing and things like that. But basically somebody in their house mm -hmm. has something in a drawer. That's a memory mm -hmm. that they've got stuffed away that they would love to display. Yes. It can be, as you mentioned, something like a, a diploma that can be framed, but it can also be, it can be a baseball Jersey. Yes. Uh, so just talk about some of the things that perhaps, people might not realize that they have in their house that they could that you might have done over the years to give people ideas of, of how they can use your service okay well um, we do a lot of jersey framing like you were saying we do a lot of football jerseys uh, baseball jerseys track jerseys we do a lot of track shoes um, the cleats we frame a lot of the cleat shoes um, it kind of it might sound redundant but we do a lot of trophy framing we'll put trophies into a frame so that they won't tarnish or anything over time 
Um, of course, we do pictures, and a lot of people will find pictures that have been damaged over time, like by the sun or by water or just by being put in a drawer and they've got scratches on them. Another service that we offer to try to help um, – solve that problem is digital restoration. Okay. We're able to take old pictures and digitally restore them and print new ones. Um, and I've seen some miracles. Like sometimes I, I get to work in and I don't, I don't even know how I did this, but it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like even, even just an old picture that's, you can color correct. You yes. can something from like the early seventies or something. Okay. Yes. Where we're all dressed like Brady Bunch people. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, and let, let me ask here. Can you take an old frame? I, I have for instance, I have an old, uh, kind of an oval-shaped, large oval-shaped frame with my grandfather when he was a relatively young man. I'm going to say it was, I'm going to say somewhere in the neighborhood of 1905 to 1910, something like that. And over the years and the process of moves here, there, and yonder, it, it got a little bit of a water stain where, where a, a piece of paper maybe stuck to a portion of the frame. Is that something that could relatively easily be repaired it is um we do a lot of frame repair we do you know things for, like in your case where something is a little bit damaged to with the weather changing right now it's been a tremendous amount of things falling off the walls because command strips shouldn't hang frames um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they, good the, advice the okay. command okay. strips come off because the weather changes and it shatters okay. the glass breaks the frame um and we do a lot of fixing well, they, of they, frames. they don't mention that in the ad nope. no <laughs> they definitely should i i feel so bad because it every year at this time we just get a we just get a bunch of frames that have They're fallen. Just fallen off the wall. Yep, right when the weather changes, the adhesive. Um, but okay. we do we do frame repair as far as things that have fallen off the wall. Frame repair as far as like I don't like this gold. Can you change it to bronze? Um, we can do cut the color correction on it. And then you know there are the frames that have the the beautiful carvings and the filigree. Um, we can actually go in and repair some of those, some of the cracks. So there's a lot that we can do. So in addition to just the frame, like he mentioned, the the age of the photo of his grandfather, can you – is that something you would – restore or would you would you make a copy of it so it's on new paper if it's in bad i mean how does how would is, is it one or the other so it, it, <laughs> you, you could do either you could do either okay you, one or the other or both okay. um if it's in really bad shape like some people bring things that have been torn in half or the paper is just deteriorating every time you touch it in those scenarios we recommend we'd make a copy so because at, at that point there's not so much you can do um, because paper ages, yes. it just does. Yep. Uh, and the beauty of today's technology is not only can you restore it or make a copy of it but with digital technology, it can live forever and be reprinted and things yes. like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I guess when you make a digital copy, you've, you've got a record of it. Yes. And we, for perpetuity. Uh, mm -hmm. and we can do, um, a lot of people like the fact that we can give digital files as well. So, you know, they're getting something restored, they're getting it printed, but then they can also take that digital file and email it to Sally, who lives in, you know, Australia and she has a brand new copy of it too. So it def, the, the digital age has definitely changed this industry. It is different. <laughs> Well, and I just like, like I, I'm a big sports memorabilia guy, yeah. um, just from my background professionally. And so I've got autographed baseballs and footballs that, um, you know, when properly yes. framed or displayed, they add to who you are in your own house, the things you like, the things you enjoy and family photos or whatever it is. Um, when you moved, were you, were you able to get the word out? Or how have when you when you moved up the street uh, has ever has everybody realized that now and following you? Or, most people, <laughs> we most people have found us. Um, we sent out um, a, a, a brochure that said, "Hey, we've moved." I sent out an email blast. I did social media. I called a lot of people and said, "Hey, we're moving." And then, of course, word of mouth. Um, a lot of our customers are friends with each other, so that helped. Um, we just unfortunately Google put us at the wrong address. It's had us at South broad instead of broad. So a lot of people have been like, we're, we're at a church. I'm like, no, you're not <laughs> the right place. So we got that corrected. That should help. Um, but we've put up big signs and we're, you know, we're, we're, I'm still trying to call people and make sure that everybody knows that, that we didn't just close up shop because we did it really fast. So it kind of, it looked, we were there and then we weren't. And the, so the new street address is? It's 519 Broad. Okay. Yeah. And, and hopefully Doug will take care of you as well. Uh, you and, bet. And, and it's, uh, your website is uh, com. It is. All right. That's F-A-R-R-E-L-L-S. 
frameanddesign.com. Doug, um, circling back around to you, what are you, you, we had touched on, on marketing earlier in Rome, Georgia, and some of the avenues to do that. Um, but word of mouth here is important as well. The personal relationships are important as well, correct? Clear, clearly. Yeah. Clearly. I mean, we're, we're still a small town. Yeah. You know, 35,000 in, in the uh, city and somewhere in the neighborhood of 97.5 in the county. So that that's still small. But as, as Amanda said, that population grows during the day because there are a lot of people who come into town to work. I mean, people come from Somerville, Cartersville, Center, Alabama, uh, Cedartown. They, they come from – Rome is still a hub. Yep. You know, it, the chamber, my chamber friends are going to hate me. Uh, it hasn't grown the, to the extent that maybe some people would like. Um, the former chamber director, Al Hodge, used to always tell me, he said, Doug, it's managed growth. You know, two to three percent. Some people want 10 to 15 percent. Two to three percent, quite frankly, is fine with me. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. We're still small enough that word of mouth is, is is a very viable thing once you have become established. You know, when when you're totally new to a community, I think you gotta do a little bit you gotta do a little bit more. You gotta reach out a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. More. You gotta let them know who you are and what right. you do and where right. you are. Right. Well, it's it's interesting. We've talked about her small business experience, but again, the people listening from Rome and the Northwest Georgia area understand, but to people listening that may not be be familiar across our business radio X network. Just talk about Rome in general, health care. Uh, Doug, just give us the big picture lay of the land of everything that goes on here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Rome is a health care and education hub. Big time. As you, as you look at – as you look behind jobs numbers, um, you, you will see that an incredible percentage of jobs in this market are in health care and education. You know, we got four colleges here, Barry, Shorter, Georgia Northwestern, and Georgia Highlands. We have we have two fine hospitals and the largest independent physicians clinic in the state of Georgia, uh, multi specialty physicians clinic. So you know we're we're well positioned uh, for health care. Yeah, every time um, you turn around, you run into a doctor. It's cr- yeah, crazy. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is. Um, and there are a few areas where we have needs, but um, those are largely because of the fact that we're not a big enough community to to attract some of the. Uh, subspecialty areas that you still have to go to Atlanta for. I think ch- children's children's heart issues, I think, is one of them, probably one of the bigger ones. We have a little bit of a shortage of neurosurgeons uh, here in the, in the community. I, and probably shortage is probably too strong a word. Not enough to be a level one trauma center. Okay. Um, but um, the, the workforce here um, is, is – uh, could could use some 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 additions. Could use some numbers, but that's a chicken and the egg type thing. You know, do you get the workers before you have the jobs, or do you, or do you? Uh, well, and the unemployment the, lumber so lump, number is so low right now. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're down in the three and a half percent range. And that's right. historically low. I, you know, as somebody who's reported business things, I've been told all my life that that anything five percent or below is full employment. Correct. Yeah. Because five percent of the people won't work. Yeah. Some just some uh, just don't want to. That's yeah, right. <laughs> some some just won't work. But that's that's not really a, a big problem here. Um, one of the things, Roger, that I, that I think that our community has that, you know, some people, particularly maybe some of the more rural types, want to poo-poo, is, is the quality of life, right? Because, really? of, because of the physicians, because of the health care system, because of the three rivers, because of the mountains, uh, the, the proximity of the mountains. We, we have just a wealth of... Of recreational opportunities, oh yeah, and and outdoor opportunities, uh, and and that's an area that I love. I one of my one of my favorite uncles was a, a National Park Service ranger, so I grew up loving the outdoors. And and we we have an abundance of opportunities there. We we have a great trail system where we're working on a trail on the west side of the Ustanala River. When it gets finished, we'll have over fifteen miles, fifteen miles of trails along the rivers, within sight of water, without ever having a single road grade crossing. Wow. Now, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think Atlanta's Beltline can say that. Right. Uh, not a single at grade crossing when, when this, the west side of the Houston All Trail is completed. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're growing as a, as a uh, retirement community. The spires out at Berry College uh, will be finished, for the most part, uh, by next summer. 
And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll add several hundred retirees who uh, are, are going to be comfortable from an economic position into our community. And, and those people are going to want services. You can bet those people are going to want to eat out. <laughs> you know, we, we always laugh about how many restaurants there are here in town. Nobody, nobody cooks. <laughs> That's it. Well, there are a lot of restaurants also. We want to point that out. Those in Rome know it. If you're from out of town, and you're hungry, come to town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's growing. The, the Ledbetter's new East Bend shopping center is going to have multiple restaurants right. in it. And, and some, some ones that are not currently in this market. So, uh, you know, it's, it's growing. It's, it's a great community. I, I would kind of echo what Amanda said earlier. In, in our business in journalism, and particularly the radio portion of it, you, there are a lot of radio gypsies through the world. And you, you're, you're in a community for three or four years, and you move on to something a little bit bigger and better. Well, 35 years, and I've, I've had a couple of opportunities to move on, but this has become home. And... Um, I, I tell people all the time, I sleep in Adairsville, but I live in Rome. And make no mistake about that. I live in Rome. Rome grabbed a hold of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a great, great community uh, for, for people wanting to uh, start up any, any kind of an opportunity. I, let, me, let me retreat back to the rivers just a second. Okay. You know, there, there was a period of time where our rivers were, were pretty nasty. Right. Um, and we still have a, a commercial ban on fishing in the Coosa River, but... Nobody does that much anyway. Nobody's going to do commercial fishing in the Coosa River. We're, we're not on the coast. Um, the recreational opportunities rivers has really grown exponentially in the last five or ten years since River Dog Outpost came to town, in particular since uh, 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 Rick Dempsey with River Rats came to town. I mean, you know, on a summer day, it's not unusual to see scores of people in, in – Kayaks and inner tubes out on the rivers. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. The paddle I, I boards wish, or the paddle yeah, boards. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I wish we we took a little bit better advantage of it from a marketing perspective. Chattanooga has done a marvelous job of of marketing its renaissance as a community, and, and you know, I we've done an okay job, but I think we could do better, and I think it's something we could hang a hat on. Well, you just did it a little bit on this podcast. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting when Rome, when the history of Rome being built around the rivers for you know cotton exchange, being able to get goods and goods up and down the river, and then I think for a while there, I, the the rivers were almost kind of in the way because every time you wanted to build a road, you had to build a bridge. Yeah, but but now, as you mentioned, this just this renaissance of of the pride in the rivers and, and the business is built around the rivers and the, the river district, you know, there's just so much going on uh, that it's fantastic. Yeah. And people want to see something attractive when they're on the rivers. They don't necessarily want to look at the back of an ugly building. And, you know, while we do have some backs of buildings, most of them are not ugly. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and some of that goes to the, the, the historic nature of downtown in general because we have done a good job as a community in preserving what we can and which is, you know, your downtown. Uh, he kind of, you touched on it earlier. He kind of hit it home there a little bit as well, but you, you were not from Rome. No. And Rome grabbed a hold of you too. It did. Um, so can you just touch on that again a little bit? Well, when we, well, my husband was deployed in Africa um, when we got the email that said, congratulations on your new job. Um, you're going to Rome. And we were like, Ooh, we're going to Rome. <laughs> oh, Rome, Georgia. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, so oh, we, you made the common mistake of Italy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we, you know, I have family in Dalton and my mom's originally from Cartersville and my husband's family is original, uh, originally from like the Emerson area. So the air force kind of sent us home, you know, roundabout near home. Um, when, when we got here and he recruited for the air force here for about a year before we started talking about opening a business here. And while he was doing that, I was just kind of out exploring and meeting people and it's just wonderful. And we got here and we opened, we opened the doors and, I mean, the people that you meet in Rome, they go above and beyond anything you could ever imagine. Like when we were moving, I was trying to move these big pieces of equipment and my husband couldn't come because he had, he was in school that day. And, um, one of our customers was like, Hey, be there in five minutes with a pickup truck and loaded it into the back, drove it down the street and helped us install it. 
I don't know a lot of places where somebody would wouldn't be like, "Hey, at least buy me dinner or something." No, you know, he's just just they're just helpful and friendly and happy. And then the the like the chamber. I in my in my personal experience with my business, if I hadn't have made the connection with the chamber, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be where I am. They have just given every avenue of help that they could possibly think of. Like. We, they want you to succeed. The people in this town want you to succeed and will help you get there. Go ahead, I Doug. can just say amen to that. Yeah, I mean, we all want new businesses to succeed and do well. I mean, everybody uh, everybody has, has the uh, ability to do well. Yes. And if, and if you put together your good plan mm-hmm. um, and reach out and, and you know, make those connections, yep. it can work. You were talking about the Small Business um, Center – um, I, I've worked with them too, and they're wonderful. They're, you know, I went in bright eyed and bushy tailed. I knew about framing. I had no idea about running a business. I kind of did this backwards. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, because you're going to have, you're going to have to pay rent. <laughs> right. You have to do all that <laughs> there's stuff. There's going to be taxes, yeah. stuff like this, right? The, the part of running a business, yeah. but they, so they helped guide you. They did. They helped guide. And then, you know, they helped us get set up with an accountant and they got us set up with, um, a lot of different avenues where we could learn, um, you know, I needed to go take some business classes. I I didn't think I did, but I did. I spent all year <laughs> last year kind of educating myself on the business side because I'm a fabulous framer. I had no idea what I was doing in business, and that was hard. It was okay for the first two years because I was just kind of rolling with the punches. But when it got down to like, okay, we're actually going to succeed, I needed to – really start studying. And that's when I reached out to the small business association and he gave me all the avenues to study. And then uh, the chamber put me through leadership Rome and I learned so much about Rome and so much about business. And it's just, if, if you have the time and the, and you're willing to invest that time and you're willing to um, pay attention to what the people in this town are saying, you there's no reason to fail. Fantastic. Yes. That's a great way to wrap this up. Yep. Let's do contact information. If people need to get a hold of you, again, the street address, because you have moved, you're up broad now. Yes. Yeah, we're at 519 um, Broad Street. We're at Suite 101 and 103. We're right across the hall from JBM Office Supplies. <laughs> okay. And the website again is? It's ferrellsframeanddesign.com. And that's the same thing on um, Instagram and uh, Facebook. It's just Ferrell's Frame and Design. And, and, if, and if I recall... From old old Rome history for old Rome folks who might be uh, tuned in today. That's the old Adams Furniture Building. Yes. Oh, <laughs> see, you're also our historian. <laughs> uh, contact information for you for people that just d walker at rn dash t dot com. One more time, d walker at rn dash t dot com. So he's the guy you reach out to um, about business advice and maybe to maybe to get a little publicity. Yes, sir. Uh, they've got something going on that is of interesting. Share your story. So uh, again, that's Doug Walker of the Rome News Tribune and Amanda Farrell of Farrell's Frame and Design. So thank both of y'all for coming. I'm Roger Manus. You have been listening to Rome Business Radio on Business Radio X. We will talk to you next time.